Common Sayings of Lost People number 20. Stop cramming your beliefs down my throat. Oh boy, <laughs> you're going to get that one. Especially if you're witnessing to somebody and you start to get them close to that point of conviction. I remember the one time I was out door to door with a brother and, and uh, remember we were talking to this guy, he's standing outside, you know, working on his vehicle and we just walked up and started talking to him about the Lord and whatever and and, um, and he's, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd really, I'd be interested in... Uh, you know, getting to know about salvation, whatever else. And this brother that was with me. He said, "Okay," but he said, "Are you a sinner?" And the guy said, "Well, yeah, you know, everybody's a sinner, yeah." You know, and he said, "Yeah, but I mean, you personally. Are there some things that you've done that, you know?" And and basically, was getting him to a point where he would be broken and contrite as a sinner. And the guy started getting angry, and it ended. And the guy said, "You know what? You need to stop." Cram he said. I have grandparents that are Christian people, they're good people, but he said, they don't cram their beliefs down other people's throats like you're doing. Get off my property. Mm-hmm. You see? They love that sin. And when you start to get a little bit too close to that little comfort area there, you start to poke a little bit too much with that double-edged sword, and you start to get in there, all of a sudden, they'll get very uncomfortable, and they'll say, hey, you're trying to cram your beliefs down my throat. I mean, it's quite insane when you think about it. Here we are as Bible-believing Christians trying to help somebody with a problem that's, that's going to land them in hell and also ruining their life. All sin is negative. And you get a little bit too close to it. And they say, hey, don't you cram those beliefs down my throat. Um, somebody's dying of, of whatever disease and you come up and you say, here, here's the cure. I got the cure right here. Here's an herbal cure. Don't go to pharmaceuticals. Here's an herbal cure right there. Here's some kind of other natural nutritional health type of thing. This will cure your sickness. Don't you cram that down my throat. That's what we're dealing with here. But let me show you from the scriptures how you can answer somebody like that. Matthew chapter 23, verse 24. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. That's one of the most incredible verses in the entire Bible. People will strain at a gnat, a very small thing to accept. And instead, they'd rather swallow a camel. You say, Let me, give me an example. Gladly. Strain out a gnat. This book here, 400 years, well, a little bit over 400 years old now, 408 years old. 1611 was when it was finished. And this book tells you how you can be saved. A Jew, a Jewish man, God manifest in the flesh, came down, fulfilled a lot of the promises, a lot of the prophecies of the Old Testament. Still going to be fulfilling those in the future of the second coming. Another story. But he comes down, lives a perfect life, 33 and a half years old. He's basically set up. He's crucified on the cross, sheds his blood to pay for your sins. He dies. He's buried. And he doesn't stay buried like Muhammad did and like Buddha did and all these other fakers and every pope that's ever lived. No, Jesus Christ actually comes up from the grave. Death, burial, and resurrection, you see. I can show you that from the scriptures. All right? Yeah. And they say... I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. You say, what do you believe? I believe in the Big Bang Theory that everything came from nothing accidentally at some unknown time in the past. And then there was a puddle of goo that eventually got hit by lightning and it made some of the goo come alive. And then the goo kind of, they, they found somebody and they, 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 the two goos got together and then they had goo children. And then the goo children, they, they, one of them mutated and then it became a man uh, billions of years later. <laughs> And you think, okay, um, you reject Jesus Christ and his word right here, but you'll swallow the camel of evolution? Hmm. <laughs> Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you sick? Well, well, no. You're not sick of sin yet? You haven't grown up enough yet to understand that uh, perversion is just empty? Doesn't satisfy you? Five minutes after you're done with your you know, perverted thing that you've done, you feel worthless again. How about alcohol? Oh, you have a good time living it up at night, don't you? There, you know, happy hour and all that stuff. How do you feel in the morning? Like you need a physician. You know what I mean? Greed. Are you ever satisfied with the money you make? Or do you want to make more? Covetousness, in other words. 
And we can go on and on and on over those sins. But you just show somebody that and you say, okay, um, are you sick? I got the cure. That's what I'm trying to give you. I'm not trying to cram my extra biblical beliefs on you or whatever else of Sunday best and going to a church building someplace and giving a 10% tithe. That stuff doesn't even appear in there. All right? Um, that's not what I'm trying to cram down your throat. And I'm not trying to cram down anything down your throat, okay? I'm trying to tell you how to be saved. But you don't need to be saved until you know that you're sick. You see? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30, through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, people that get saved, uh, every single one I've ever seen that got truly born again, um, they have enough of the world. You come to a point where you just say, I don't want to go out and party. I don't want to look at pornography. I don't want a new car. I don't want new clothes. I don't want this. I don't want that. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm fed up with it. I want something real. Yeah, and that's when you are ready to call upon the Lord and say, God, I don't even know if you're real. I don't know if this book is true. I, I, don't, I don't know anything. I want the truth. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. When you come to the point uh, in time when you are sick of this world, then you can call on the Lord. Then you're ready to get in contact with God where you need to get to.